Um, you have found yourself in the last couple of weeks at the receiving end of a lot of hostile commentary, at least online, if not in other places too. Uh, we start by just asking you to tell us exactly how you've come into harm's way in the last couple of weeks. Yeah. Um, yeah. So the commentary has been uh, vile, to say the least. Um I think it kind of started as a personal attack on me with like certain claims of, you know, you're looking for fame and limelight. You tried your hand at presenting, you were crap. Um, so this is your way, you know, to try and gain some fame. And I just like it's laughable because never have I ever experienced necessarily a positive outcome for standing up to racism um, and in general in the history of the world. If somebody wants to be famous or to have limelight or advance their career, you generally don't stand up and speak about something that's not really recognised as such, mm. you know, mm. um, and isn't always the common um, kind of theme or understanding by mm. many, you know. Uh, just to bring people up to speed for people who aren't fully familiar with the background details of it, and we don't need to go over it too yeah. much because it's all out there in the public anyway. Yeah. Uh, you were at a live show with Tommy Tiernan and he made a joke that you objected to. You raised concern about that joke. You called it out online, which is, of course, you're right. And yeah. if you are if you feel aggrieved by something, it is, of course, your entitlement to bring it up. Yeah. What was the immediate reaction when you did that? Um... Just uh, things like, did you not know what you were going to? You know, you work for RTE and so does he. How did you not know that they're the kind of jokes he tells? You're a slow snowflake. Uh, you're so easily offended, always playing the victim. Um, there was a lot of here she goes again because I'm I'm an activist. Like I'm an ag activist for equality and, uh, you know, especially ethnic minority groups. Um, that's my f main focus always has been. Um, but yeah, just that kind of sensitivity, can't you take a laugh or this also censored new world uh, cancel culture or being woke, you know, you can't get away with saying anything anymore. And I suppose my, my response to that is a hard racism is never comedy if you as a comedian need to punch down like that um, it says a lot more about you I believe and there are plenty of comedians out there that are amazing at their craft that don't need to, to diminish or degrade minority groups to get a laugh you know so um, I appreciate it obviously um, that Tommy did reach out to me and apologise um, I did try and meet up with him in person um, and unfortunately he said he was too busy to do that um, just to kind of reiterate the fact that apologising to me is not something that I actually ever asked for um, and what was probably more important and on the scale of making change and a difference would have been a public statement mm. because it would yeah. have shown him as an advocate for our community and an activist for our community and it would have expressed and stopped the kind of um, misinformation that was going around in terms of, you know, he, t he took ownership. Uh, mm. expressed that it was offensive and he should have been called out about it and it was taken from his set and and furthermore it has been dropped by Free Now um, a taxi company because they also don't stand for hate speech um, and you know I think you know I have to commend them for taking that stand I in no means wanted this to be an Emer and Tommy thing and I think that's what people made it what it is, is about racism in Ireland, about the lack of diversity here, the lack of education and the need for us to move forward because we're decades behind other countries in terms of even just acknowledgement of it. It's like um, my tweet, I tweeted yesterday and just said, I'm actually, I'm going to explode. I think if I hear another person say to me that they're shocked when they hear about a story about racism, because how can you be shocked? Like you have to literally have your head in the sand. Yeah. And it means that, you know, you as an individual, you need to open up your world, you know, like who are your friends who are, are in your community? Because if you know even one person from an ethnic minority group, our stories are all the same because mm -hmm. we go through the same issues, you know, on the regular. And Emer, do you think that comes from a place of unconscious bias where people think, well, if I don't feel it or my friends don't feel it or I don't see it, then it's not happening? Absolutely. And I think unconscious bias is the key word in a lot of this um, because I, I do think that a lot of the time there isn't malice as such behind, but there is a lack of education. And then, you know, when you when you live in a systematically racist world, um, you know, we are all 
unconsciously biased about things. Like I am unconsciously biased about things. And I feel like if you can't step back and reflect on that, then you're, you're probably doing something wrong. Mm. Um, you know, when you look at in terms of like the European standard of beauty, what's put out in the media, like all of that kind of stuff, even in itself, gives you an unconscious bias of what is attractive and what is beautiful right mm. so you know you see a person of african descent you know we we don't have thin and straight long nose we don't have you know certain size lips our body shapes are different don't even mention the hair you know so i think you know until you start seeing those changes within the media and more representation and equality and diversity that people are seeing it every day it becomes the norm and it's not like either tokenistic um or you know where you get to a point where it doesn't have to be even like a thought mm. Mm. Um, but the un unconscious bias like I had a conversation with an old school friend and um, she said oh, you know I, I saw, saw what was happening and you know but I, you know I like I like Tommy and you know and I just kind of feel like is it really racist here though Emer like and I just kind of said you know I can't yes it is and it's really hard for me to continue to answer that question mm. until people start to do the work themselves mm. and the education themselves and also open up themselves to community. Because I, I asked her straight out, I said, do you have any friends from an ethnic minority group? Mm. And she said no. Yeah. And I said, that's the main reason why you're asking me the question about is there racism here? Because I can promise you that if you did have friends or relatives or, you know, in any way were engaged in that community, you would understand and know the severity of the issues that go on daily for so many from ethnic minority groups here in Ireland. Do you think that there's an element of sensitivity in Ireland about this, that we don't like being, you know, having a mirror held up to ourselves when we talk about things like racism, that Irish people have an immediate defensiveness when you bring up issues of racism? Mm. I do a little bit, yeah. And I, it, like, I, I find it really hard, a hard. It's a hard pill to swallow for yeah. me because we ourselves are immigrants. You know what I mean? Like when you, date back and you think of the slogans, no blacks, no dogs, no Irish, like at one point in our ancestors' lives, you know, we were looked at as, you know, second class yep. citizens, yep. as, you know, um, dangerous, violent alcoholics. There was times where having an Irish name, an Irish accent, you couldn't get a job, you couldn't get housing, uh, you know, you were treat treated lesser than, you were treated as if you were a black person, like literally, that's kind of the whole thing. So it's not like we don't have experience of, you know, understanding what it's like to be discriminated against um, and also go to other countries yeah. and try and make a life for ourselves there because we have friends, families, um, you know, our loved ones that are living all over the world still. It's not like just a past tense thing, you know, we've got people in Canada, Australia, New Zealand, the Great Britain, they're all, we're all over the world as Irish people. Um, and thankfully we're not really facing that extent no. you know of racism now but it definitely is something to do with our past and I think sometimes people say in terms of racism and black history you know I wasn't a slave owner I wasn't alive 400 years ago why is this my problem and why are we still talking about this the problem is that Yes, there isn't slavery anymore, but a lot of the oppression and discrimination that stems from back then is still apparent today. Mm. So mm. if you ever stood back and actually wondered why, for some reason, you have this unconscious bias that somebody with brown or black skin potentially might be uneducated, you know, uh, be a leech to the system, you know, not have a, a job, um, be dangerous in some kind of way, it all dates back to to history, mm. you know, because mm -hmm. it's been ingrained within the systems of the world that people of colour are A, B, C and D. And unless you as yourself challenge that supposed norm and really educate yourself and and learn about history, like it's very hard for your mind frame to change or for you to be able to step back and realise, oh my goodness, I am unconsciously biased and I'm getting it now. I yeah. understand. Mm. Because when the penny drops for people, like those on their journey to allyship, when that penny drops and when you see it, when you see the lack of representation in terms of ethnic diversity, you will never unsee it again. Mm. Ever.